my mind was saying, you're so off. You're so not present. I'm like, I'm the most present in my life. <laughs> 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 not really, but you know, you make all kinds of excuses. So, so that was the right ignition podcast topic, alcohol and drugs. So I didn't prepare any definition for alcohol and drugs. I don't think we need a definition for that. So maybe we just go right into it. Like, what do you guys, like, what are your first thoughts when you hear alcohol and drugs? And chat, share with us, of course. Well, for me, uh, <laughs> it just reminds me of the bad days. <laughs> Because, yeah, I, I went through that and it was, um, I was just thinking today because I was like in my mind preparing for the topic and I was like thinking why I was doing it because it was like every weekend and I could not wait to get drunk actually. So yeah, for me, it's a, it's a lot of thoughts. It's a lot of memories and it's just something bad. It's not a, a really nice thing for me even to, to think about it. All right, got it. It's bad and not nice to think about it. All right, Ricky, what about you? I never really um, drank a lot of alcohol. Um, I think the first time I had alcohol, I was 20 because the alcohol loss in my country, mm -hmm. you have to be 20 to buy. Um, and I never really liked it. And ever since then, I I haven't really touched alcohol. And for me, alcohol is just something people consume when they are at bars or go partying and stuff. That's that's like the only thing I see alcohol as. All right. And drugs? Never done drugs. All right. But what do you, when you hear drugs, what, what, what does your mind say about that? I think about the TV show Narcos. <laughs> That's honestly <laughs> all I think of when I hear drugs. I, I think about criminal minds, narcos, and TV shows because I don't really have any experience with drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, people OD and what I see in TV shows. All right, mm -hmm. cool. Uh, so Chad is saying, Mr. JP is saying party. Currents is saying rock and roll. Yeah, all right. Uh, for me, when I think about alcohol and drugs, um, well, first thing that pops through my mind is don't need them. <laughs> that is the first thing. Second thing that I got about it is um, I did both. Mm, just like Ula shared also, couldn't wait for the weekends, right, to go out, party and drink. Um and about drugs, I, you know, habit is just like, um, what it's called. Come on, JP, lost the word. You become addicted, right? So either psychologically or physiologically. So, so it's, for me, it's that, but it's a lot more. I'll share, we'll all share probably in the next minutes to come. So, all right. Um. And let, let's let's take it this way. Why do you guys think, like, by your experience or but by what you know about it, why why did we make, uh, you know, why does people use alcohol and drugs? Like, but not use. We kind of more or less abuse them, right? We so you know the whole philosophy that you two have on alcohol and drugs. Well, what is it? Like if you look yeah. from a humanity perspective, right? Yeah. For me, even from my own perspective, is uh, escaping the reality. Um, that's like the main thing. And the other thing is to be normal and popular, especially with younger generation. I remember for us, it, you were cool when you were like hanging out and drinking and using drugs and blah, blah. So trying to kind of um, be part of the gang. Um, that, that's something, yeah. 
Laura? I can I can agree with that. I I think it's um a lot of group pressure involved. Um that if your friends drink, you drink as well because you want to fit in and don't want to be the odd one out on parties. Uh and same with drugs. And I just think it becomes like a cycle. When you have started, it's harder to get out of it. I would say. Yeah. All right. Both viable, both viable, viable. And and <clears throat> so hello everybody, Evgene. Hi, Mikey and Assassino. Hi. Hi Mike. There we go. Mr. JP said, seriously, when I hear drugs, I feel fear. When I hear alcohol, I see good food with nice glass of wine. Yeah, mm -hmm. current relaxation. So, all right. Evgene, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome to the family. Hope you will enjoy the stay. JP fam welcomes you. Um, well, for me, like, you know, alcohol and drugs are out there. Like, like Ula said, it's escaping reality for sure. And then I'm, uh, my mind goes immediately to a question. So real lives, so to speak, of people are so bad that we need something to escape it. And as a human race, we are providing that all the time. So it's either, you know, in this case, alcohol and drugs, we can have video games, we can have food, we can any kind of addiction, right? Not to deal with reality. So. So that is where I go like, so it's much easier to make and produce these things than to deal with your own shit. <laughs> you know, if you look from, from the perspective behind, like like even the people who makes, you know, the, the, the alcohol people who produce drugs, like, you know, grow the plants and then make the whole laboratories and everything. Everybody is like doing that. Because that's much easier than to go and and you know maybe say sorry to people or, or to deal your own shit and then of course you go into a cycle the 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 demand on the market you provide it right and then it goes like that in circles so so all right but what do you think would be like the nature of drugs like all drugs are plants right before they become drugs so I'm, I'm always, I'm, when I come to drugs, I'm like, how, how did people invent this? <laughs> you know, <laughs> who, who, who saw that plant and then make a uh, cocaine out of it? It's just like, it's ridiculous. I mean, even to go, yeah, they do for money, of course. And, and to use, right. To, that people like to escape reality and just abusing this. Um, so, yeah. All right. Damn, this is like a, like a weird topic. <laughs> a weird topic and, and a very interesting topic at the same time. Easy money, right, Kurt? Yeah, like, like I said, right? It's easier to do that than go to work or to make your own company and, and to, to fulfill it, succeed in that or, you know, deal with your own shit and not take drugs or alcohol not abuse it right it's nothing is wrong with using but abusing which is mostly happening out there like mr jp said a glass of wine that i would be saying it's using it but a bottle of wine two bottles of wine that's already probably abusing the wine <laughs> you know uh so all right so Going into the experience, Vicky, you said, right? In your country, you cannot drink alcohol by the age of 20. So yeah. the, does that work for the most Swedish people or it just works for you? No, okay. <laughs> no, it, it, it definitely doesn't. So the rule is you have to be 18 to drink, but you have to be 20 to buy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when you turn 20... Um, you're allowed to go and buy alcohol above 3%. And I would say it doesn't at all work. I would say most of the people that do drink are under 20. And they get it from their parents. Or they get it illegally by someone else. But I would not say that it actually works. Because I see way too many teens drinking at bars. And God knows where at home. Mm -hmm. So... All right, so that doesn't work. And what what was one of your experiences? Either you said you don't drink much, 
So, but anyway, you you tasted alcohol. What what happened yeah. that you don't like it? What 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 was your experience? I I never had a bad experience with alcohol. Um, it's not the reason why I don't drink. I I just don't drink because I don't like the the taste of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I can I like drinks like you know fruity drinks, but if I if I taste alcohol, it it doesn't taste good for me, and that's why I don't drink because I don't want to consume something that doesn't taste good. Easy peasy, and you don't have easy, this. It's, it's easy peasy. Yeah, it's like why would you eat something that doesn't taste good? Same with why would you drink something that doesn't taste good? For me, it's not worth it. Mm-hmm. Even if you get a bliss out of it and get drunk and have a great time, I personally can have a great time without alcohol, and I don't need to consume something that tastes bad, and then I'm gonna feel horrible in the morning, you know. All right. And did you came to this on your own, or was there parents or or no? I I came to it uh, on my own. My mother was very strict uh, with not letting me have alcohol and stuff like that. But when I turned eighteen and got up, she said it's your own decision. Um, but before that, she was very strict with it. All right. So we could say that there was an influence by her. Yeah, a small uh, influence. Uh, but then, if I uh, wanted to choose to drink now, I would be allowed to do it. I just don't choose to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but that is a very, I would say, very healthy relationship from the yeah. parents to to their kids, right? So, by the time of eighteen, I'm responsible for you. You don't do it after eighteen; it's your own choice. You know the consequences. So there you go. Choose whatever you want to choose, and. It's so simple, right? Because we hear many, many times, usually when when anybody was tasting something for the first time, either it was a drug or, or alcohol or a cigarette, right? Nine out of 10 people don't like the experience, but we still do it. <laughs> that, so week is that one, the week is that 10, <laughs> 10 people. <laughs> I <have> one time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she was like, I don't like it, I'm not doing it again. Because a lot of the people like don't like it, but they do it again. <laughs> All right. Cool. And and what about you? Uh, what was the the, the, the the question again? <laughs> yeah, like your experience with alcohol. Like how did it start oh. and, and why did it it was keep being around or it is around? Yeah, I was wondering why. I mean, I'm pretty sure, I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure I wasn't in love with the taste. Um, but yeah, I, I I remember that being drunk was the only time I felt good. So what happened? Um, I started drinking and using drugs very early when I was like 13, I think. And um, I didn't like my life. I hated school. I was good at school, but I hated it. I hated the system. Uh, I hated to be told to do something that has no meaning. Um, I hated the rules that has no meaning. They are just there to be there. Um, And... um, I started, yeah, drinking and abusing drugs, and um, I haven't. I mean, I didn't see any any meaning in my life, and that was the only meaning I got. I I didn't at that time. I was missing love and um, some restrictions, basically, from my parents. Um, there were there was no. Um, attention no um, no time for me and yeah I, I just went to that imaginary world where you got you actually get lost right when you're on drugs or, or like a lot of alcohol and um, that was it I was living from one week to another and I got drunk every Friday every Saturday um, and what happened then in my second at the end of my second year uh, in high school, I started training like 
I was always a sport girl, but I was never like competing um, like on some, I don't know, international level. And I started competing in kickboxing and I got the point, you know, back to my life. Like I, I had something to live for, to, to get up for, to, and then I actually saw like very fast that I cannot drink and I don't smoke and use drugs if I want to be successful in that. So I need to choose, right? One or another. So it was so um, amazing for me what I could do with my body, what, what, uh, how it felt when I won the, um, the championship and so on. It was, it was another kind of drug, to be honest, but at least it was way healthier. I mean, okay, we can go into that. <laughs> Uh, but it was still healthier. Um, so yeah, I actually um, just changed the the the, the drug. <laughs> but still, that that was uh, why I stopped using drugs and alcohol. But it was still there. It never left. Actually, when I stopped competing, it came back immediately. I was like, oh my god, I lost. I know six, seven years of my life, everybody were partying out and using drugs and having fun and la la la. And I was just training and training and training. And I was like, I need to you know, step up my game. I just lost six years of my life. And then I went really hardcore, um, not so much with alcohol, but with uh, hard drugs like speed and cocaine. And um, the funny thing was, I didn't know much about those drugs because I was from the sport world and I was so naive. Somebody would tell me, oh, you cannot get addicted from speed. It's okay, just a drug to have fun. And I would be like, oh, how amazing. And the other thing was, I was so tired from all the years of training. I was like really exhausted. And speed gave me energy to be awake. You know, it was so much fun. Oh, I can be awake for 48 hours. Amazing. But after a few months of using it every weekend, um, I got not just addicted, but also like if I was tired before, I was like super, super tired. I could sleep for a week every day, 20 hours. I would be still tired. So it was really, really bad. So um, I went through some some crazy, some crazy shit, to be honest. <laughs> uh, but today, and then again, yeah, what happened? I found I found something that pulled me away from that, and that was my first brand. I started to build some, something on my own, and again, I knew I cannot be on drugs while doing that. So um, I needed two years to re re rehabilitate. How you say that? Yeah, you say it. Re rehabilitate. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> that um, completely like uh, two years not using any drugs. Um, for two years I had those ticks and um, like electricity all over my body. Uh, it was really, really bad. And, um, but today, if I, if I look at drugs and alcohol today, I would never use drugs again because it was really horrible what the, what drugs did to me. I mean, I did it myself, but, um, and alcohol, I, I see now I don't use it that much anymore. I definitely not abusing it. Um, I drink a glass of wine because I like the taste of wine. Um, but I really, love myself and I know myself now and I want I know what I want in my life much more and I'm doing those things so I feel fulfilled and that's why I think I don't need to run away anymore so that's the whole story awesome we'll get we'll get more into it by the way Currents workshop donated five euros thank you for the donation saying the best I like Awesome. Thank you for your support and love, buddy. Um, okay. And now 
or I'll share and then we will go into into your experience of drugs. I'm sure me and Vicky has tons of questions for you because we, we never did it. I don't know, Vicky, if you're <laughs> curious, but I am, right? I am. I'm very curious because I want to know what, you know, how you do it, what's the feeling right afterwards. So so with me, alcohol, it, it started inside the family. It was like my parents going with the with the belief of, you know, if we introduce alcohol to our son, if our son gets introduced to the alcohol, it's better by us. So he will at least drink good wine for the beginning, right? Um, <clears throat> so so that's how it started. I think you know, I was 14, started with a glass of champagne. I don't like champagne. It's the most horrible wine ever. I drink it just because it's a toast wine and, and you're supposed to do it. But otherwise, I hate it. It's disgusting. Um, so I liked white wines. I never liked red or dark wines, uh, but uh, white. But then if I really reflect back, I don't even know. I guess I drink it just to be, because I could, you know, at the at the lunch or something. You know, they asked me, would you like to drink less one? I was like, yeah, okay. But then I first get drunk at the end of, high school first year of high school um and it was it was not nice experience but i was okay my mom picked us the next morning uh, because we slept over uh, where we party uh, i was okay but my friend my schoolmate from grammar school he was wasted he he couldn't stand we were waiting my mom at the bus station <laughs> he was lying on the bench he couldn't move that guy went far I was like, for the first time, drunk. It, it was a hype feeling as well. I remember it now. It was like, yeah, I'm drunk. How cool. It was like, yeah, da, da, da. you go, you know, you do you do stuff. No looking good. Da, da, da. All, all that. I mean, you know, avoiding looking bad went away. So just do what you want to do. So I guess that's what I like, that the alcohol gave me this, um, that I relaxed didn't think about what people think of me and just did my my shit at the moment um but yeah i was still being like if i partied on friday i didn't do it on saturday that that was for me if i went out late on friday i didn't do it on saturday um except one or two occasions that uh, when I was a student that we party like four days in a row I went out every night but that was one week <laughs> that was one week and it was like I was all hyped after four days it was like I didn't get drunk wasted just like the the, the good drunk but and then it was like that and then I did a bunch of stupid things while being drunk you know well I you know I was drunk so bad that my my friends need to carry me home, like like really out of the car, carry me up on the to the house. Uh, and our house is in the hill, so <laughs> they need to pick me up again because I couldn't walk. <laughs> I couldn't walk, you know. I, I I couldn't breathe, to be honest. I was the thing barely breathing. Um, and then. I just started to, to realize with alcohol, it was like, I didn't even know why I'm drinking anymore. I, beer, I drink beer, but then I'm like, I don't like the taste. It, it, you know, by a norm, I, I don't like it. I don't know. It's just like I drink it because it's supposed to be good. Even nowadays, I drink like Heineken Zero Zero. And I just figured out two days ago that I'm probably allergic to something that is in the beer because... I have all these little rashes all over my mm. body uh, on a specific spots and, and now I'm testing it. Now I won't drink it, let's see what happens. But when I think back, I think every time I drink beer, I have these rashes, I, don't, I cannot connect it, but it is like it, it is. Um, but mostly I drank the alcohol, yeah, just to, to be relaxed, not to think about, just go. And it was all, always, when we go out party, it was related with girls, you know. My my self esteem was really low. I don't look good, so I got I have to drink, you know, to loosen up, so I can even have the courage to to approach a, a girl. Um, so and that went well, couple of times. Didn't went well, thousands of times. <laughs> 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 it is what it is, right? 
But then at one point, I think I was like 25, 26. I was coming home from a party. I didn't feel well the whole Sunday. And then on that Sunday, I remember I was thinking about, all right, what do I have from drinking it, right? So my wallet is getting empty faster than it's getting filled. I don't feel good the, ne the next day. Uh, and I can party without it. So that was like just, all right, I won't drink alcohol anymore. And since that point, I was only a little bit drunk on my, what is called, my uh, uh, bachelor party. Bachelor party, yeah. And luckily, I was drinking like some homemade lemon uh, uh, schnapps, something like that. But it was like Luka Doncic was playing the game, and the guy said, "Every time Doncic scores, you have to drink." So luckily, that game. They were so good, he stopped playing after three quarters. <laughs> so I was yeah. like, all right, I did 10 shots and that was it. And I kind of uh, went, well, no headache next time, next day. So and that was the only time. And otherwise didn't get drunk from 26 until now. Um, I did drink it a couple of times, so I cannot say I'm totally didn't drink any glass of it. But yeah, yeah. just like mostly waste of for me it's waste of money and waste of my body so so yeah that's that's how it is now but how it was there and then drugs is the other way around right i was being scared of drugs i remember being 16 mad with my my friend schoolmate from grammar school he came and we we uh kind of a hangout together like five six of us and some friends of his uh, he, him came and they were like here, do you want to try wheat? And I was hmm. like, no, 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 no way, bro. I was like, it's okay, you like it, good for you. No way, I was scared. My my parents built in, I would say, scarcity uh, towards drugs into me. I don't know what they actually say uh, or do, but it was just like, they never did it. My dad say, if you drink alcohol, that's okay, just don't do drugs uh, because that's how he did it. He he did alcohol. He didn't do drugs, and he was okay as well. So, so yeah. And then I would start reading a lot about the 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 marijuana. That was the thing. I started a little lot to read like thirty to forty articles, scientific articles, uh, how it's good, why it's good, why it's not good. You know, stuff like if you smoke together marijuana and tobacco. That's the worst thing ever because tobacco burns at 180 degrees Celsius. Marijuana burns at 120 degrees Celsius. So they bring out the worst of each other when they're combined. All of that. So I first tried wheat uh, in uh, Switzerland when I went to visit my friend. And, and that was my first. And it was like, it was okay feeling. I was like a little bit chilled out. I was like 28 years old at that time. Uh, I was like a little bit chilled, a little bit like, all right, that, that could go through. There was some sensation in my in my head. I was thirsty a lot, but I was like, I can cope with that. And then I start, you know, doing it more and more and more. So in the next two to three years, I was like, my dad had the brain stroke uh, before that. Um, so we kind of, I looked into how wheat can also help him with that. So... Then I talked to my mom and said, mom, look, what if we grow, you know, weed at home and make pasta for that? She was like, okay. She knew I smoked. Um, so, so yeah. And in the end, by the age of 31, I was smoking it every night, half a joint pure, no tobacco in it, never. Um, because I... I was so anxious. I hated people during the day. I couldn't wait for the evening for that, you know, that I can sit on sofa in my room. I can put on some playlist and and drink and, and smoke that weed. And, and that was like, and for that one hour and a half, I loved everybody. I loved everybody, you know. And I did try cookies as well. <laughs> one time me and, and two of my friends, ate cookies and went out and one of the friends was not used to it so he was totally 
he was <laughs> he was wasted that that was like the worst experience for him right we went down to the riverside in my home time there was this burger party and then concert we were there meeting other friends couldn't talk to them uh by one of my friends asked, hey, where is the other friend? And I said, he's right here. And he's like, where? And I'm like, he's here. Where is he? He was keep asking me, where is he? And that went on for a minute. And I said, look, he's here. And he's like, where? And then I like grabbed the guy and show him, here he is. You see, half a meter away from us. He didn't see it, man. He was so, 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 oh. you know, it was like uh, experiences like that. So I would say all in all, I stopped at the age of 31 and a couple of months in January 2018. Um, I was also growing it, like I said, I sold it all um, afterwards. Um, and yeah, never touched it again. And But why I did it, psychological addiction. I couldn't cope with the world, just how I see the world without it. It was just like, that was the easy way out. That's why I did it. That was the easy way out. So you're anxious. All right, do two, three breaths and you will be okay. And then, you you know, I did it and okay, cool. My mind was saying, you're so off. You're so not present. I'm like, I'm the most present in my life. (laughs) 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 Not really, but you know, you make all kinds of excuses. So, so that was, that was basically in a short clip, my, my experience with alcohol and drugs. I never did any other drugs. I was thinking about mushrooms, ayahuasca. If those are drugs, mushrooms are ayahuasca is also illegal. So, so yeah, but, uh, yeah, we could, we could, you know, weed is still illegal in Slovenia because it's illegal. That, that is it. That, you know, answering why the heat is like, my explanation is because if weed becomes legal, pharmaceutical companies lost, you know, there are major losses. And Slovenia is more or less based on two pharmaceutical companies, you know, mm-hmm. Kirka and, and, and Lake, uh, owned by a Swiss company. So it's just like that. You put weed out of the market, they cannot sell you pills anymore because this weed actually, you know, which is actually your weed. <laughs> Uh, uh, cannabis will actually, uh, uh, you know, heal those people, and they won't. They won't need pills. You know that. That's how it goes. It, it's that's my. But you can also make paper out of it. So the wood industry is out. The paper industry has to all transform. Um, you can make plastic out of it. So there you go. Companies who make plastic, you know, and and it's basically plastic degradable. You can make ropes. You can make. Uh, oil, fuel for the cars, you know, bunch of things you can make out of it. And so many industries are endangered by it. They won't get profit. They couldn't run in it. That's how I see it. Money related, capital related. So, all right. Ula. Tell us, right? Because you have, uh, you know, okay. We Alcohol is like more or less every human being deals with it, right? And then, okay, we, I would say it's quite popular. But then nowadays, more and more popular are becoming cocaine. You can get like cocaine basically in every village almost already. Mm-hmm. So, so you know, what's your experience? You know, just did you, how, how did you use it? And what was the, the feeling inside? How it, how it turns out for you? Okay, so... If I start when I was hmm, 14 or 15, I'm not sure. So uh, I tried uh, ecstasy. (laughs) And the first time I took it, you know, there were those hearts that were really popular at that time for rave. Um, And I would take it half. And... I wasn't drunk or anything. I was just on that ecstasy and the party was lame and I started crying. (laughs) I I went to 
the car and I was just crying. Oh my God. So I wouldn't do that normally, right? So that was like the first one. And I was like, okay, this this is this is horrible. I don't like that. So I said no to ecstasy. Um and then I tried speed when I was also I think 15. And um yeah, for me it was so cool because I was with one line, you know, like you sniff it, I was awake for the whole night. It was so awesome. I really loved to dance and I was dancing the whole night and I normally I would be like sweating like crazy and I would be super tired. But in that case, I was like fresh and everything was fine. But uh, when it was 5 a.m., we had to leave the club and we were walking home. And the effect would go off and like my legs were super heavy and I didn't feel well and I was so tired. But and then we got to that friend of mine and he he made a joint and he's like, oh, just smoke some weed. You know, you will be able to sleep. It was horrible. I, I smoked the weed. I couldn't sleep. I was in my head like something was going on, like a hamster inside. I was so tired. I mean, that was horrible. But still, it was super horrible. But because it was so awesome the whole night, I did it again and again and again. And then the the whole uh, situation with sport came uh, after that when I was, I don't know, 20, I think. Um... At that time, when I was 15 or 14, I actually didn't know anything about speed or ecstasy or anything. I just knew what they told me, that this is drug and it's really cool. That's all. Um, I didn't know about the addiction or anything. And then when I was yeah, 21, I think, I stopped competing. Um, I mean, actually, I didn't stop yet. I was like, have well, I will or I will not. Um, and, um, there was a, a guy who was on drugs for a long time, I think, and he was super nice to me and everything. And I felt like I just, uh, finished a relationship with my ex who was really abusive. And I was like, oh, this is so sweet. He's so nice. He really likes me. He really, uh, you know, take care of me. And he was just trying actually to get me on uh, uh, speed um, and have someone who will do that with him and who it was actually a it's a party drug but people also use it for sex right I know if you you probably know that but uh, and um, I didn't know that but yeah but and um why do you, why do you people use it for sex? Yeah, I mean, I I, yeah. yeah. Let me explain it. So when you're on speed, you you're hypersensitive, so you feel everything much more. So when you have sex, it feels way better, way more like you feel everything, and your orgasms are kind of better in your head. Um, but um and you can do it for a long 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 time i'm saying like 12 hours okay and yeah if you ask me if you have consequences like physical yes you do then it's not fun <laughs> both sexes so um so basically but what happens after that yeah it's so cool right to have sex on drugs but when you stop because you want to stop using drugs you really don't want to have sex because it's lame and it's horrible. You And then you can only have hardcore sex because it's the only thing that you actually like feel. <laughs> and then you simply disconnect from the person that you're having sex with. And so it leads to, to all other things. And... Um, so I would be using speed for having sex actually for, I don't know, a year. And after that, I needed like a few years to, to reset my mind, especially my body, um, to understand 
what sex is and how it's supposed to be. Um, but still, would I change it? No, I wouldn't because I learned so much at that time. Um, I came so much stronger out of that because I was really ashamed for doing that because I was like a role model. I was a personal trainer and oh my God, you know, I, I cannot tell anyone, nobody can know. Um, and um, I didn't want anyone to know. So I, <laughs> I decided I would deal with it by myself. So no, no pills, no doctors, no shrinks, no nothing. But you have to know that after I stopped, I had those attacks in my body where I would feel like, you know, the computer, when you turn like the old ones and it freeze and you just click the button to reset it. So it was like that. Somebody would just randomly click the button. Didn't matter. I mean, it wasn't matter. Am I sleeping or am I eating or I'm walking or whatever so it was just so randomly that it was scary and it was like shock me like somebody would drag the soul out of me and bring it back and it was at the beginning it was like 20 times per day and I don't know but I think somewhere I read that it takes two years to reset your body after using drugs and I was like in my head, I just put, okay, 24 months, 24 months. You just have to go 24 months. Everything's going to be fine. And yeah, it was better after a few months, uh, after a year, and then after two years. But still, guys, you never, you never just delete it because it's always there. I mean, even after a few years, I remember... I was walking on the street and I would smell something that is simil similar to the smell of speed. And all my body goes like, Ugh, you know, so it's always there. And when I'm really tired, I have to, f I don't think it's, it's happening anymore. But even after a few years, when I was really tired, I would get those seizures, if I can say like that. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun and it feels really cool when you do it for the, especially for the first few times, then you need it more and more and more. Right. Um, but after some time when you're abusing it for some time, it gets really scary and not a lot of people will talk about it because nobody is proud that he or she did that or is doing that but um yeah nobody nobody ever tells you when they like give you drug drugs they would never tell you yeah you know it's fun but after it you're gonna be like i want to kill yourself or you'll be like super without any sense in your life um, but that's how it is even after you're using speed and the <sighs> So the next day or the two days after or three days after, when you stop, you really feel like, I cannot explain to you, it feels like life really sucks and you just want to, you just want to disappear and you just want to sleep and you just maybe want to even kill yourself. Um, yeah, and I know people who are using drugs like every week for the parties and I ask them, but how I mean it's been like 10 years or 20 years and you're still doing that how but how do you feel after it yeah it feels a little bit bad you know but you can handle it it's it just one day you know but you had I don't know two or three days of fun and I'm like oh my god you know it's so it's a really super strong thing so yeah it that's my that's my experience with drug but I would still say there are lots of drugs that are not listed as drugs um, because after that I experienced another drug which was food. I talked about it. I had a compulsive overeating disorder after that <laughs> um, and uh, it, it's the same. It's a drug. You, you just get high on food you know, and then you get 
low on food and yeah but it's nobody says it's it, it's a drug it's, it's just food so i think whatever you abuse it it's a drug action i mean first of all thank you <clears throat> for sharing so so authentically what was going on with you and that you talk about it I'm sure it will make a lot of difference for whoever will listen to this or if they think about using it or not at least they know what the consequences will be so if you start using you know probably what you will be dealing with after you will say no more uh, is there any difference between speed and cocaine i don't know these drugs so yeah speed is cheaper first of all <laughs> <laughs> and um and it's uh um they say it's not natural so uh, it's um, some kind of uh, chemistry combined so it's synthetic um, drug all right what sorry it's synthetic drug yeah yeah exactly but i think even with cocaine it's not pure right what you get here it's combined with something um but yeah i would say that speed is something that like young generation could afford in my times and um, cocaine was something for the you know the older gener generations um there is a difference also um when you're on cocaine you you are not that high i mean you are you are present you are just like super um aware and you have full of, you are full of energy you might be even aggressive some people are um but when you're in, on speed you are a little bit out of this world too so like when you're using ecstasy so basically yeah that's um that's the difference that i noticed all right all right chad is having debate who is doing which drug <laughs> uh, hello Dracovic is joined up and we see Verlich here. The heat might nice of you guys to be here. Um weed confused my head, says Currents. Yeah, it did mine as well. Um through that, through that. It can be it, it's psychological, affecting psychologically. So Vicky, anything for you? I guess the only drug I take is sugar, but <laughs> that's the only thing I can say. Um I never had anyone in my life that really did drugs and I've never been around drugs. I don't have any personal experience with drugs, uh, only alcohol. And the only experience I have with drugs is from TV shows. Mm -hmm. And if someone tells you about it, basically. But other than that, I have no clue. Other than mm -hmm. that, some drugs are for medicine, but that's about it. I'm very clueless in that department. All right. But, you know, you game a lot, right? And and yeah, I was gaming much more than I am these days. I still do. But would you say is that some kind of drug addiction as well? I would say, yeah. I would say some people take drugs to disappear, to feel better about themselves. While some people use, for example, gaming or food or whatever you do to escape in a different way. So some use drugs and some take other measurements. So yeah, I would definitely say that gaming can turn into some sort of a drug if you do it all the time and if it's like some sort of an escape for you. Was it ever like that for you? Um, it was when I was a bit younger, yes. Uh, I was never the girl that was uh, out partying because uh, I preferred watching movies, going out to dinners with my friends and stuff instead of going to parties. Um, and then friends fell off because I was never in the, like, in the circle of um, the people that did drugs or alcohol. So I took to gaming instead and that's where I met most of my friends that I have now. So yeah, gaming became a really big part of me and I would say it, it changed my life and it became some sort of a drug um, because I was always on my computer, always. Yeah, would you say, you know, usually there are consequences by by using any type of drug or, you know, right now we kind of, with you saying it, we, we did, uh, you know, basically everything falls under the drug 
which if we say drug is something that you're addicted to, right? So it's not necessarily only hardcore or, or plant-based or synthet synthetic, but it can be also gaming, it can be also mm. food, it can be also gambling, you know, the 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 sexual so sex or masturbating, you know, stuff like that. And and it goes list is like long. We people are addicted for <laughs> you know, once you go research that department, it it's becoming weird and weird. And then you look a little bit on the dark side of the net and it's it's getting even weirder. So all right. Uh would you say any consequences for you was like that being a gaming a gaming a lot? Like, you know, I being like anxious or any... angry or stuff like that. Um uh... Well, I know a lot of people have anger issues that play video games, but when I started gaming, I played The Sims. Mm -hmm. It was I played like um some some MMOs, but mostly like Sims and building games and stuff like that. Um and it was more of um finding what I liked. Like I love designing, I love doing things like that. So gaming for me was never really negative. It's more made me realize what I like to do in my life. Um, the only bad part was maybe that I sometimes chose gaming over activities maybe with my family or that I skipped going somewhere, hanging out with friends just because I wanted to sit and build a house in Sims instead. Um, so I would say maybe that is um, the negative part of gaming because you disconnect from the real life and you might lose connection with people you have, like friends and family from it. But that's also a choice you have to be aware of. And if you're aware of it, I would say you can prevent it from happening. But it's it's easy to end up where you just forget everything around you and just focus on what's on the screen. Yeah. Yeah, that is that is why I uh, exposed that, right? Because it, it was also for me like that. I was star gaming when I was six, seven years old. I was playing Wolfenstein 3D. My my hand, which was on the mouse, my right hand, was frozen when I was playing that game. That's how scared I was, petrified of playing it because, you know, I could die. It was so real for me. I remember it even now. And then at the age of 10, my mom put the computer into the, the closet with the glass doors on it. So I could see the computer, but I couldn't use it because it was taken apart. And I was crying, like really, really crying, like like she killed my family in that moment. You know, it was such a for me also. It was an escape from from reality, like yep. drug based, and then yeah. So it's uh, that's why I mentioned it because I kind of have the similar experience. When I was doing wheat, I didn't do gaming. <laughs> you know, that, that that is also the thing. For those three years, I don't remember playing games. Uh, but I did weed, so there is, was always something. Uh, okay, the chat went live a little bit. So Karina said, I tried cocaine and I liked it a lot. After a while, my boyfriend at the time noticed I wasn't so happy with it after some time. He said, how it is with drugs? You're always chasing that first high. That was exactly how I felt. I realized it would never be so good again and I never did it since. Well, that is a yeah. smart thing, right? From from your boyfriend then. And that you choose it like that. So Drake says alcohol is a drug. Drug is something that changes something in psychologically or physical state. True. If you know how to set priorities in your life, drugs do not effective, T Heat says. I mean, yeah, to some degree I, I agree with that. And then at one point, I would say ask your I would ask myself these questions. Do I set priorities or do my addiction, my addiction or my need for drugs set priorities? So you know, so that I can with my priorities justify the use of the drug. Just just in that relation. That's what I would be asking myself. Is it like really me authentic? Like like you know, authentic human beings, most authentic human beings are little kids. Who are just full of love, really being present. They don't care what they did five seconds ago. They don't care how they look like in front of people. They cry, they laugh, no matter where they are, right? 
that's the authentic human being. And then here we are grown ups who are all most of the time worried what people think of us, how we will look like, you know, and then you do something and then you set prioritize. So you have some focus in life. And even for me, I still dwell in this question, you know, with the, with gaming, like, you know, I said, I'll go to bed half past 11. I go to bed at one o'clock. I game from half past 11 to one. Right. So then I'm just kind of justifying in my head. It's okay, you know, but it's just five hours, five hours sleep, six hours sleep. I can do it. But from half past 11 till one o'clock, none of my priorities are ruling my life at that moment. It's just me love to play video games and, and doing it whenever I could. So that that would be my my question here. Not just for you, Dikit, like for anybody, everybody. Um, so. Because would you pay your bills and buy food or would you buy 50 G's of wheat? Have no idea. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go for G's of wheat nowadays anymore, but I mean, you manage to do it both. I mean, you know, that's what I would say. And yeah, I heard about microdosing. It's okay. I mean, you know, this podcast is not about we are against alcohol or drugs, you know, you're just like sharing our experience and how we deal with it or dealt with it. And, and, you know, everybody will do whatever they will do. Uh, so microdosing is also, I heard it, people do it mostly with, with mushrooms. I think that at least that's how it was presented to me. So, so that is also okay because it helps some people with schizophrenia and then some other mental state issues i i do know people who who became like copable in life so they could really cope with life like people who don't uh, use drugs so so that does that does work for for people as well i will you know here main thing i would say about this podcast is that <clears throat> we look into our life where we are addicted to anything whether it's alcohol drugs or you know any other type we mentioned and just see it if that is in somehow owning our life or do we have it, do we own it? So that would be basically, I would say, uh, the whole pure intention of, of this podcast the tonight. Um, yeah, exactly. We said it before. And every person has an addiction. Yes mostly but i wouldn't say every person there is seven and a half billion people on the planet so <laughs> there are some people who don't who are not addicted to anything but it's very hard not to be addicted to anything because human mind gets addicted to anything that feels good you know you can even be addicted like ula said before to success the winning championship she just changed the drug from speed and alcohol she went to to, to that adrenaline rush and, and success that you that you got so so yeah I, I think there there is something that almost every person in our society like uh, modern society is addicted to and that is sugar um, white sugar because it's almost everywhere <laughs> it's in bread it's in I don't know if we go to um ketchup and all the sauces um it's it's everywhere basically not just in cookies and chocolate um but i don't know i I know if you know but um sugar is actually has the same uh effect on your brain that um uh, that has cocaine so it it gets you like alive kind of right um but it's also so addictive that it can be compared to heroin someone i mean some people say says that it's even more addict addictable addictable is the word i guess yeah it right? is yeah. it is it's yeah. ten thousand ten thousand more times addictable than heroin sugar okay so it's people a lot get, <laughs> yeah yeah so that's why kids when you give them sugar they go crazy and we when we try to get off sugar we are really 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 cranky and have all those symptoms of headaches and all the rashes on our bodies and all and then people would go like oh 
is this in i know it's just this stupid diet that's giving me headaches and all the rashes on my body but no it's actually because you stopped using something that was re actually bad for you but it was your body started to need it so um yeah it's it's sugar it's um i think there's a doc documentary about it hmm. what's it called i have no that idea sugar pill that. is it the, the sugar pill let me check i, I think know. it's like Ravay says but it's still legal why and why is a drug that i can smoke and does relative no damage to me illegal well you said before it's one thing is uh, capitalism you know you you if something that is good and can be used really white like like cannabis like marijuana can be you make it illegal you know so you can make all those little profits and 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 exploiting things and the other thing is we human beings mostly go around thinking we we have our life under control right but then they put your sugar everywhere and suddenly you don't have your life under control if you're not aware of it and you take like a handbrake and stop and x like use sugar only when you say you will use sugar because you think okay i'm eating bread so there is no sugar but it is right like ula said so so in all of that have you in a control you know it's consumerism on the other hand i would say that so just to feel the put the people in hamster wheels and we keep on running in circles and thinking we live our life to the max when in fact almost every decision we make is out of marketing and 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 putting sugar there like you know for me one of the scariest thing now is being as a father is like because we don't eat sugar at home like anything that has sugar in it i don't know except some chocolate protein chocolate bars but even they don't have sugar in it they have stevia so you know and and then most of our relatives right they do that so but i'm like fuck man you know I'm, I'm. and then the question in my head is will i be pissed when they will give him sugar or not we you know because then in my head is like do i risk relationship with people who are supposed to be loved ones and we do love and take care i mean not take care of them, but love and care for them uh but if they give sugar to my son they basically can pull you know it's a way of poison he will get addicted to mm -hmm. it so then i he will come home i will have to de deal with this little addicted you know <laughs> human <laughs> being that i don't say anything worse he will be addicted he will be like screaming on the ground daddy give me a chocolate give me a chocolate i'll be like are you you know so then i have friends who don't do that and then explain their kids they understand but then when they go out it's like a whole fucked up situation to be honest so so it's just like you know and then comes right you addicted to sugar another thing that we are really addicted to human beings is cheese we don't even know but it's everywhere as well mm. right almost everywhere and we you know coffee we, yeah and ca caffeine exactly and yeah. and all coffee, these things energy that sugar <laughs> energy drinks right so i would just say it's it's a really wide topic broad topic we could be debating about it for a long long time but more more what i would put here out for everybody would be just be aware right be aware of what you put in your body what is in it uh what you put uh like what you use and how it affects you and you know in that you really have to be responsible like what i did right i said before i grow wheat right and i sold it and most people are like all right you sold the wheat i sold it like i don't know 750 g's for i sold it on a slovenian italian border for i think so 1700 euros really cheap because it was mass if i would do it gram by gram i would get triple of that amount of quadruple of that amount right or five times of that but I did it, but what most people don't know I did, and I'm probably the only person in this country that did that. I went and admit that to the police after three years afterward, out of living my life fully responsible and in integrity. And that was out of integrity with the, with the state, right? So I did, I, I uh, report myself, 
I wrote an email to the police, both in, in my hometown and, and where I sold it on that part of Slovenia. And I get email back and I get the invite to interview with the detective. And I went and he said, look, in Slovenia, law is like that. You cannot sue yourself, so to speak. You cannot report yourself, but we will have this and then we'll see how it goes on. So I explained him everything. I didn't use any names of the people because it was only my thing. It was not to be involved with anybody else. Um, and I went away and he calls me back and he said, now you got to come again. We will make it official. And then he was like, do you want to report yourself and go in front of the judge? I was saying, uh, so by the law, I'm not obliged to do that. I said, no, but just tell me what's the possibility that anything happens. He said, look, probably mostly what will happen is we will have more work to do. Prosecutors will have more work to do. And in the end, judge will just throw the case away because lack of evidence, because it's just your word and there are no hard evidence because you know everything was sold there is nothing uh, at our house anymore nowhere is nothing it's like it's only in my words if i say it exists it exists if i say it don't uh, it doesn't so i said all right then i'll just fill everything in and then we do not go with the official report and he said all right and then what i got home was i got the letter from the how what it's called from the uh from the judge that the case is officially closed and everything is uh, clean. And in, inside of that, you know, I make my conscience clean. I did something illegal, but I went and I talked to the authorities about it. Nothing bad happened for me. Everybody was scared when I said to Ursha, I will go and do that. She was like, don't do that. We just want to create family. We will have a wedding soon. You will be in prison. You know, that was her story. My mom said, don't, 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 don't do it. It will look bad. So I was like, mom, I'm going to do it. You know, it's, it's a huge out of integrity for me and my life. And I don't want to be somebody who who is hiding that my whole life knowing like from behind that i did that so yeah it, and in the end nothing bad happened i had really nice conversation or i could say made a friend with that detective <laughs> we were having laughs he was interested why i'm doing that i was the only person in slovenia doing that so so uh you know they never got a deal <laughs> like that somebody wants to do that but yeah i i did it and there is nothing bad happens, but in that regard, I talked it out. They knew it was happening. They they know it's happening. They were not interested in me anyway. They were interested in more of who did I sell it to because those guys are doing it regularly, right? Uh, but I didn't give any names because it was not my choice to do that. But yeah, so so that's how I would say I cleaned up my name uh, and my consciousness, so to speak. So it's not hunting me and, and I have an official paper that everything is fine. So, so yeah. Uh, see, yeah, yeah, I did it. I did, I did. I did it on my own. Uh, I did it, I did it. Uh, I did how to say. I don't know in English the word. I read myself out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know uh yeah i was being snitch on, on myself that that's the word being a snitch exactly but look all in all you know had experience of it uh, i could i always say you know whatever experience we have we can only use it in sharing it with others how it is and then people have more choice in it right because if you tell it fully, look, if like Ula is having amazing experience, if anybody, you know, if when she will be talking to her kids one day, she could say, look, if you will use speed, this and that will happen. If you will use cocaine, this and that will happen. If you will ecstasy, this and that might will happen. If you use alcohol, this and that. And it's coming from experience, we people tend to listen more. That's just it, you know. Or she has also experience with weed. I have only weed. I can only speak about cocaine and stuff like that from my friends like Ula is right but I can say a lot about you know gaming and 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 bad habits of food I was training a lot eating a lot of milk had a lot of you know pimples all over stuff like that so, so all of that so <laughs> yeah you know it, 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 no, no. It is. I'm actually but. laughing to that he tried speed and had no effect on him just waste of 10 euros and I wanted to say 
obviously it had no effect for 10 euros. <laughs> 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 there you go, Dikit. You bought some cheap shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so anything for the end of the official part of the of the podcast? Anybody want to say? Will I be keep? Yeah. Um, I think drugs are here, and alcohol is here, and sugar is here, and it probably always will be. Um, it's just on us to live more consciously and to love ourselves and just listen to the stories of people who tell those stories with integrity and how it was and not just making them pretty. Uh, and then decide for ourselves what we're going to do with our bodies and our life. That's it. Cool. That was really well said. Anything you want to add, Vicky? Except that was really well said. No, I I agree fully. I agree fully. Like um, I think you need to paint a picture by yourself, and not by what you see on TV or what some stranger tells you. Sure, you should listen to it, but having someone that have done it close to you explain, or for example, you trying alcohol, that will paint a whole that different picture than what you see on TV or what someone says on the news and stuff like that. That. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Vicky and Ula. For me, for the end, it was be like, look, it's widespread, right? And it's well, it's not that hidden, but it still it is, right? I, I mean, I was, I'm sure my grandma have no clue what's going on in, in our hometown. <laughs> <laughs> about about drugs she might know about alcohol but but anything about that uh but i would just say agree with Ula. you know whatever you do do it consciously uh be aware of it especially be responsible for the consequences then don't blame anybody else if you use drugs or something bad happened to you it's not that person's fault it's all of it, all in all your responsibility uh and People get abused while they're on drugs. So so also be aware of that. Um, so yeah, everything else, we said it. Thank you, both of you, for, for being here. And thank you all for being with us, uh, uh, chatting and, and listening. And yeah, that is it. An Irish podcast, a topic, drugs and alcohol. It's... <laughs>